Hello there, Ray here, and another 1.14 Minecraft snapshot came out. This is 18w50a, and with this snapshot they have introduced a lot of new features, including some new villages as well as villagers, some new functionality to go with the new blocks that they have introduced, as well as some changes to do with raids. If you're wondering why I'm invisible, this is just a bug to do with the snapshot. They updated the desert villages, so they have the new buildings. As you can see, they kind of have the same kind of style where they have some pens as well as tons of small houses. And there's even some very large houses. Over here is a really cool one. It's a uh, kind of an outpost and it's quite tall. Looks like it's four levels. And inside it just stairs. It's like a tower that takes you all the way up to the top. And then at the very top here we have a chest and it has some more themed stuff to go with the desert. It's kind of like a lookout post. Maybe they're looking out for the pillager raids that are going to come in. Lamp posts are a little bit different too. They got some sandstone as well as terracotta. And they call this cut sandstone. And then there's a torch on top of it. And the pathways are mostly made of sandstone as well with some terracotta. The houses definitely have like that pebble look where they're kind of like in the desert. And for like the doors and buttons, it's all a jungle theme, which kind of goes uh, with a nice texture, although it, there is no jungles nearby. And then inside of them, a lot of times they have some green beds. Kind of go with the cactus. You also see some flower pots with some cactus and also seeing some one with the dead bushes in them as well. So this is another way to get dead bushes. They also have some stalls on the outside, like this stall is selling some of the cactus as well as dead bush inside of pots. And then there's the other ones that here has like one with the bale in it. And then in the center they have their water well. I gotta say the desert themed villages probably look the best out of all of them. I really enjoy them. Here's like a library. Here's a double door one over here. This one looks like one with the stone cutter inside of it. I really like the slanted, uh, this kind of slit little windows. Just the whole thing is really looks nice for a village. This house here is pretty cool. It has a staircase that kind of goes up to it. And then inside this is the smithing table. So this must be the smithing uh, villager's place. And there's also attached house to it. And this one looks like it's supposed to go over this way. It looks like it didn't quite generate properly. Oh, it looks like maybe it filled them with sand. Something kind of strange going on here. It looks like, yeah, this all filled them with sand. Oh, maybe this is like their sand storage. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> maybe. Uh... I would think they would store something better than sand. But that is super cool how there's like a basement underneath of this one. They also got some farms here in the desert. Let's see what they have. They got some melons and this is all wheat it looks like. So it's kind of a similar theme of that of the taigas. Uh oh, the villager trying to pass find through this cactus. <laughs> Don't you know you have to go around? You can't go through the cactus? The villager skin also changed as well. And the way that they work is that they have two different types of skin. So they have their profession skin which is the one that's underneath. And then on top of that, they have their uh, biome skin. So you see this guy, let's right click on him. He is a weaponsmith. So he has his weaponsmith skin. And then on top of that, he has his desert themed skin. And if you go ahead and spawn in more of these guys, you can see that because we're inside of a desert, we get all the ones that are desert themed. You definitely see a common theme among all the desert guys. They kind of have these light colored robes as well as some kind of protection. Like these farmers here have these straw hats. These guys kind of have these um, head pieces and they also have their professional uh, outfits on them as well. Like this guy here, you can tell that he is an armor guy because he has like this face shield as well as he has protective gear. And this guy is a shepherd. He has a different kind of hat. Not sure what kind of hat that is. He also carries tools in his belt. Uh, this guy here, you can see that he's carrying a fish in his belt and something else. And he is the fisherman, of course. This guy's a cleric because he's like the only purplish guy. And you can also see like the farmers here and the net wet still in here. He doesn't have anything to trade. And here's like the tool smith. He has some kind of tools on him as well, as well as wearing a brown apron. Now I did go ahead and return the first trades that were missing. So like the first trades of a cleric are always rotten flesh and gold. And they have returned these back to the villagers, which were missing in previous snapshots. Here's a librarian. He looks pretty cool. He has this kind of red hat on. And he's also wearing glasses, which is typical of a librarian. And he also sells the book in the second trade, which is nice. They also updated the taiga villages. Here's one here. You can see the theme is cobblestone as well as spruce variants. So we got spruce stores and a lot of cobblestone. It looks really cool. You can also see they're really into pumpkins. And a lot of their theme goes around the, kind of the greenness, so you see some mossy variations of them as well. The houses are kind of logged. As you see, like all the roofs have this log theme, which is really cool. And they take use of also the trapdoors to make these really cool shutters. This one also has two layers. As you see, there's the outside stairs here, which takes you to the upstairs. And then there's purple themed 
uh, beds. You can kind of see some of the stuff, pumpkin seeds as well as bread and also some more spruce themed stuff as well. The lanterns inside these CDs are just cobblestone walls with uh, some torches on top. And here's some bigger houses. This one looks like a two-story house. Ooh, it has two doors, so like a kind of like a porch area and then the actual interior. And how do you get to upstairs? You must be another outside ladder. Oh yeah, there's some stairs here to get to upstairs. Oh yeah, this is just like the other one. This one has some berries as well as some ferns and some spruce saplings and even pumpkin pies. I guess to go with the pumpkins, there's some pumpkin seeds as well. Here you can see their gardens. They have some pumpkins just kind of sitting around the outside, but inside this garden they have some wheat as well as some pumpkin seeds growing in here. They don't look like they have any other type of uh, vegetable. They also have some berry bushes that are spawned around their areas, so I guess the villagers could walk through here and eventually die from that. I think it generated with the structure, um, otherwise it just happened to generate the structure inside of a berry bush. Here's another garden over here, and this one is encased in some Aussie cobblestone. Looks like the same kind of stuff going on here. Got a lot of pumpkin plants. And there's another larger structure over here. This is quite large. Looks like maybe a temple. You can see the exterior here is really nice. It kind of has a bottom part as well as the top part. Let's go inside and check it out. Oh yeah, this might probably be a temple. There's a brewing stand. And here is a flower. And then there's a ladder to go up to the second story. Uh, like I said, villagers normally don't path by into ladders and climb them. This is pretty cool. It has a really vaulted ceiling here as well. And all the windows are these fence posts. Which are also spruce themed. And it looks like part of the path is missing. This filled in with the spruce planks here. And this is kind of cool. Uh, part of the road actually goes over a ravine without getting completely destroyed by it. This looks like a shepherd. Yep, this is a shepherd. And what do we have down here? Oh no, that's a butcher. This house looks pretty cool. It's like kind of a small bottom and a big top. Let's go see if we can find a gate inside of it. Uh, there's no door. Oh, it must be like an elevated house. So the only way to get up is through here. Oh yeah, nice little cozy house with a blue bed inside. Here's a house that has one of the different types of crafting. This is the fletching house. And I got some chest in here. Oh yeah, I got flint and steel as well as feathers, I guess, to use them to fletch up some arrows. But these still don't have a use yet. So any of the cooler biomes, such as like the taiga, and here we're in some extreme hills. You kind of see this is their uh, look of the villagers. You can see they're definitely wearing some coats, maybe multiple layers of them. Looks like maybe rabbit skin or something. And they definitely have some warmer gear on. Although they really don't have anything on their heads. Uh, like their heads are still empty for the most part, so it's not like super cold by them, but you can tell it's cooler. So it looks like the taiga uh, village there was spawning in the plains type of villagers, because here I'm over in the plains just spawning these guys in, and they kind of look like the ones we've seen over there, kind of have the brownish coats, as well as pretty much the same kind of outfits, like here's the fishermen. So maybe they just accidentally didn't generate the proper uh, villagers to go with that type of village. Because it kind of makes sense that they would have more of the colder themed outfits, uh, like the wool ones that they were wearing, or they were like, I don't know, wolf skin or something. Yeah, it's definitely looking like that maybe the villagers are just generating with the default ones, which probably ones with planes. And if you spawn eggs and you actually get the ones that come from the village, I'm sure they'll swap this out when they get time. But yeah, these are the ones that go with the villages. It would probably be these type of variation. And this is a new villager that they came out. This is the mason villager. He currently doesn't have any trades, so you can't right-click him. But he's going to do stuff to do with like the mason building, which we've seen. They had like terracotta and clay and some stone inside of it, as well as the stone cutter. This is kind of an interesting house. You see there's three doors outside here. And they all kind of go into the same interior. This has a cauldron. And upstairs they have uh, two doors that go out into this kind of patio. Looks like the generation on some of these is kind of funky. Here's one that generated on top of these kind of little sand blocks here. So the whole thing's kind of up in the air. And if we go inside, you see that this is one of the cartographer's house. And there's also, I guess, a door that kind of goes out here into open patio and it goes back inside again. And then this goes back down again, looks like. But the whole thing just happens to be floating. As you see, this part here is open. Here's a different type of temple. It's really cool. You see inside they have the brewing stand as well as a really vaulted ceiling. So maybe seating the slabs. It really looks nice from outside. Like I say, I really like the uh, desert villages of all the different type of villages. And all the new villages have some stray cats in them. You see one here. Of course, you get close to them, they try to run away. And those can be tamed up to um, have yourself some normal cats, like a pet cat. And it seems that these stray cats often die inside these villages from suffocating different ways. 
So inside of a desert, you get those desert villagers. But over here in the savanna, where this uh, village initially started, you would get the uh, villagers that go with the savanna. These guys almost look like they're wearing some wreaths on top of their head. And they also got kind of uh, these red coats. Probably kind of like a wool coat of some type. You can see there's all different types of variations of them. This guy must be the butcher. It's like, like a blacksmith. Oh, he's a weaponsmith. It's a leather worker. This is the mason guy. He's going to be a new guy that, that you can give him new trades. This guy must be... Oh, this is a netwit right here. He's just sort of green. This guy must be the cleric. And then over here looks like the librarian. No, this is the shepherd. So here's the librarian. He has the glasses. And the cartographer, he has the monocle, which is easy to tell him apart now. And inside of the cold villages, you can see that we would be able to get the cold variations of the villagers. And if I go ahead and just place them in, you can see that these guys are wearing these kind of uh, aqua color coats. And they're definitely wearing some warm gear. It's probably made out of some kind of hide or wool. And you can see the same kind of themes go on like these, some monocle guys. So this would be the cartographer. And this guy is a butcher. So you can definitely tell them apart even though they're wearing different types of gear. And they're even wearing these really nice warm hats. Here are some of the other guys you can see, like the cleric is here. Just barely recognize him because he's wearing the purple. And then some other guys, like this guy here, wearing the eye patch. He's a weaponsmith. Probably was working on some weapons, actually poked his eye out. Here's like the uh, armor guy wearing the same kind of head piece. But they're also wearing like their warm coats on top. So the guys that are inside of the swamp biomes look like this. You can see they kind of have these leaves on top of their heads. And it's kind of a weird theme. They also got these purple coats. And other than that, they kind of have the same kind of outfits as their profession shows. But definitely notice the like leaves that are kind of stuck to them in different positions. So it seems if you have villagers in any other of the normal kind of general biomes, they're going to end up looking like these general ones here. These are like the same ones you would see inside of a plains. Here in the jungle, the villagers are jungle themed. So you see they kind of got these leopard coats on. I don't know if these are supposed to be like ocelot skins or what, but they kind of have the polka dotted uh, furs on them. And they also wear kind of these, um, looks like maybe bones that they have part on their clothing as well. And they're wearing like not very warm gear because they're here in a really warm jungle. This guy here looks like he has a feather in his hat. Yeah, it must be the Fletcher guy. Oh yeah, that's a Fletcher. It looks like maybe they're wearing some sandals too uh, as their footwear. But there's still no uh, jungle villages yet. But it looks like maybe there will be since there is jungle themed villagers. And these guys here must be inside the river so their spawn is that. The zombie villagers also got these new themed outfits. Here's a clerk, it's kind of cool, he has a creeper face on the back of him. But you can see their outfits change and they're not kind of themed with the actual biome. They all kind of have the same genre no matter what biome you put them in. So this is kind of like the default skins that you would kind of see inside of the villagers that are inside the plane. But in some cases you can actually see their outfits a little bit better. Like here's a cartographer, I believe so. And on the back side he kind of has this sling with maybe like a satchel or something. It has maybe like some maps inside of it. So overall you actually can see their skins a little bit better because they don't have as much stuff over top of them. The baby variants, both of the zombie villagers as well as the villagers themselves, keep kind of the old skin. Here you can see one of the babies right here. They change it so that if a zombie kills a villager, when you do go ahead and cure that villager, it will keep the same trades they had before. They gave some more uses to these utility bucks. So this time they gave it to the barrel, which you can right click into the smoker here, as well as the blast furnace. So to make a barrel, you just need to get a crafting table. And what it takes is it takes planks on either side and then just some slabs on top and bottom. It can be any type of variant and that will produce one barrel. Now the barrels can be right clicked into and you can throw your items inside of it, including uh, barrels. And then you can just go ahead and break them down. And then when you break them, it's just going to drop all your items. So it's not like a shulker box where it's going to keep them all. So it's just a different way to store items rather than having a chest. Barrels act very much just like chests as you can put items inside of them with hoppers as well as take items out of them with hoppers. They break very similar to that chest so you can use your hand. And they can't be pushed or pulled by pistons. Would be cool if you could push and pull them. Sort of like a barrel how you can roll it along the ground and move it. That would mean that they would have to change it so that tile entities can be pushed by pistons. Which would be a nice feature to add eventually. And they are solid blocks so power can go through them. Unlike chests, which if you have a block above them, you can't open them. If you have a block above a barrel, you can go ahead and look inside and open them. But I think one of the best benefits of having these barrels is that they are a full block 
meaning they won't interrupt your rendering, such as chests do. If you go to an area where there's tons of chests, it's going to kind of hurt your rendering because the model is not full block. So even if you have a bunch of chests right beside each other, you'll notice that there is still all this gap that has to be rendered and stuff. But if you have a whole box of barrels, the only thing that's going to render is the outside of the barrels and then the inside corners here aren't rendered which really helps with your uh, frame rates. I'm guessing they did this kind of as an alternative to shulker boxes because a lot of people don't have tons of shulker boxes to stick inside of chests. So now you can have uh, barrels that you can just, let's say you got tons of stone or gravel in your world, you can just kind of set them aside in these big huge uh, cubes or barrels and kind of store them there rather than filling up a whole bunch of chests full of them. Next is a smoker which acts very similar to that of a furnace and the way you can craft it up is using a furnace in the center with uh, some logs around the outside. So these can either be logs or wood. You can either go here and then this will make you one smoker. So the difference between a smoker and a furnace is a smoker is just used for food, but it will also do it faster. So let's go ahead and put in some food as well as some fuel here in a normal furnace. And that's going to be smelting up. And then here we got some food as well as some fuel in a smoker. Notice how fast this bar goes across to filling it up and putting some of the cooked food over here. Now look over here, you kind of see how slow it is. So it looks like it's about twice as fast or maybe even faster, maybe three times as fast for going ahead and smelting out food. So you only got two items there, we already got three and I started that one first. So it's at least three times as fast it looks like. So I wonder if it also works for kelp. Is kelp considered a food? Oh yeah, kelp is also considered food. So you could use this to cook up your kelp faster into dried kelp, which you could turn around and use for fuel again. And it works just like a normal furnace where you can have hoppers putting in fuel as well as items and also pulling items out from down below as well. The blast furnace is similar to that of a smoker and it has a little bit different crafting recipe. The way that you craft up a blast furnace is that you use a furnace in the center and then this is the new smooth stone. And then you have iron ingots that go around the top here. This will produce one blast furnace. So just like the smoker, it does stuff faster. So we go ahead and we'll put in some iron ore in here and we'll also put in some iron ore in here and you can see how much faster this smelts compared to the normal furnace over here. So this one's almost at two items. That one's just barely, about one and a half. It looks like maybe it's about three times as fast or a little more than that of a normal furnace. But it specializes in just ores as well as melted down other metallic objects. I definitely see both these being useful in, in large industrial kind of setups. So if you have a big auto smelter array, this would be nice for smelting up different types of ores or maybe you're just smelting down a bunch of swords that you have. And this is good for cooking up a whole bunch of types of food all at once, especially if you want to have speed be included. They made some changes to the pillager outpost and the pillagers that spawn around them. Normally you get these normal pillagers that will spawn around them, but once in a while you get a patrol leader and this is uh, known as the outpost captain and he will also give you the bad omen. He'll give you level one of bad omen when he comes. So let's get the information off of him using F3 and I and let's go ahead and kill him and see if he gives us bad omen. Yes we did. We got bad omen level one. They also changed the Illager patrols, which can spawn around villages. Here's one here. And these guys are also known as captains. If you kill these type of patrol captains, you'll get between levels 1 and 3 of Bad Omen. So let's go ahead and kill this guy and let's see what level we get. See, we got Bad Omen level 3, so we got the highest. This will allow you so that when you do go inside a village, instead of just having like a couple waves with level 1, you will get two waves for every Bad Omen. So this means that you would get six waves with Bad Omen level three. And they also said that Illager Beast will come at wave two, and then the Witches will start coming at wave four, and then you'll get the Evokers at wave 10. Now we did a bunch of testing to do with uh, raids and making a raid farm on our stream. And we noticed that the waves would only go up to wave level 10. So even though you get two levels per Omen, and the Omen can go all the way up to level nine, you only get 10 waves at most, meaning that you only get Evokers at the very last wave. So they said they gave the bell a sound. You can put bells on the side like this. You can put them underneath and look like this. Or you can put them on the ground and they look like this. Now you can right click them on this side and they'll kind of sway back and forth. But they don't make any noise. Looks kind of cool. Here's this one and this one. You can still see the hitbox even though the image changes. But it don't seem like they actually have any noise and like redstone components don't seem to make them make any noise as well. Now they also added the new cat texture. This is the cat that won the contest. 
So they had a bunch of textures that they added to the cats, but then they left one to be added that will be one of the Minecraft community's uh, cats themselves. And they got down to three people and then they voted on it. And the final winner was Good Times with Scar with his cat Jelly. So this is Jelly and this is the texture of it. And the way you get this cat is you just find it here in the villages. And I just tamed him up using some fish. Now you do not use name tags. It's not like the other type of Easter eggs like um, Toast, which is a rabbit, which you would name up. But as there is that rabbit called Toast, and now we have one called Jelly, so I guess you can have Jelly and Toast. So this is considered cat number type 9. And if you kill it, it's just like killing all the other cats, they drop some string. I guess that's kind of like considered uh, like a hairball or something. You can see the message, a uh, cat was slain. It was my cat, so it tells me that it was slain by somebody. They also changed the texture of the bedrock, as you can see it here. To me, it looks like there's actually more colors inside of the bedrock, like more variation. And this made it really hard to like record with any bedrock around because it's really hard to compress it when there were so many different colors inside of one block. Similar to like the old netherrack. And I really wish they would kind of change it so that it was better for rendering. Otherwise, like recording or streaming around bedrock will just kill the frames. They also made some texture changes to cobblestone. It looks a little bit smoother around the edges as well as some of the other precious metals, which I can't tell that much, but I can see the general theme between these two are pretty much the same. They also changed some of the other textures, such as like the horse armor. You can see it looks pretty cool, really uh, kind of smoothish. They also fixed a couple bugs in a snapshot, including one to do with the pillagers flailing their arms all around if they don't have a weapon such as a crossbow, which I showed earlier, as well as banners were losing their names when they were placed on walls. There's still this bug where you can get multiple raid bars, and we came across this during our stream. It's pretty funny. A lot of interesting changes came out with this snapshot. I'm pretty impressed with that. I really like that they started giving some of the functions to some of those utility blocks, as well as they're still tweaking the raids, which is a nice thing to see. Having the different types of villagers is going to make a lot of fun for us in 1.14 on Protect, as we're trying to collect up all different types of mobs inside of the game. So now we're going to have to find these different types of villages that have these unique types of villagers with their special coats, and bring them all back to the Protect. Zoo. One of the things that we are wondering about is if the villager zombies would also have unique coats depending on the biome. This would make a ton more types of zombies that we'd have to collect up, but it seems that they decided not to do this, or if they are going to do it, they'll probably do it in a future update. It will be interesting to see what type of function the bell actually has inside the village, as well as see what the new mason villager will sell as well as buy inside of his trades. Now they did say this is going to be the last snapshot for the year, so we're not going to have any more snapshots from now until the Christmas holiday is over. I'd like to thank you guys for watching, and if you found this video interesting, show me the like and share this with others. I greatly appreciate that. And if you'd like to see more snapshot review videos like this, as well as cool things I designed using these new features, be sure to go ahead and subscribe and hit that bell button if you want to get notifications. And I'd love to hear what you guys think about this. Are you guys satisfied that they went ahead and not removed the furnace, as well as added two new furnace types that are specialized in what they do? And would you guys use the barrels, and what would you use them for? As well as, what do you guys think the new Mason guy should sell as well as buy? Tell me all that down in the comments. Bye-bye!